Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's your girl Naza Ugala bringing you vlogs from Omaha, Abia State. If this is your very first time of seeing me, thank you so much for clicking on this video. Please do well to subscribe. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you for always coming back. I really do appreciate. Welcome to the second episode of my series titled the Be Our Friend series. And guys, this series is in commemoration with the Be Our Friend Remembrance Day, which happened every 30th of may in this series guys we're going to be talking a lot about the events that occurred before and during the biafran civil war we are also going to be capping it up with a discussion titled 50 years after the civil war has this war really ended we will also be relieving the war by visiting two major places of historical interest which are the national war museum and the ojuku bunker if these are some things that you are interested in watching please click on the subscribe button and don't forget to click on the bell icon beside it so you'll be notified each time i post a new video and guys in today's video we are going to be talking a lot about the abori accord yesterday guys we talked about the 1966 school the counter coup and the aftermath of these two coups. After the events of January and July 1966, which was worsened by a program, it was a stalemate between the federal government and the government of the Eastern Nigeria. General Lojuku refused to go to Lagos, citing that his life was at stake. Also, General Gowon, who was in charge at this time of the federal government, refused to come down to the east, also citing the problem of safety as his reason. So, the, so it was agreed that a meeting would be held at, held at Aburi in Ghana. This is where these two parties would meet. The meeting was held from January 4th to 5th in 1967. A document memorializing the areas of shared understanding was produced after two days of meeting. It was known as the Aburi Accord. The gathering was attended by senior military and police officials and government secretaries. Topics for discussion included a committee to work out a constitutional future for Nigeria. The back payment of salaries to Igbo government employees who were forced to leave their posts as a result of the disturbances. The need for resolution, renouncing the use of force. The refusal of the eastern region to recognize Lieutenant Colonel, Lieutenant Colonel Yakub Gowon as Supreme Commander. The predicament of displaced persons following the pogroms in the north. The fate of soldiers involved in the January 15, 1966 coup. And the planned distribution of power between the federal military government and the regional government also required urgent attention. Within a few days of Gowon's return to Lagos, their beauty agreements began to die on the vine. Um, available. The records are there. In fact, only about two weeks ago, I saw a set of the records again. The transcripts are available. But we talked about the Nigerian situation. And certainly, at the end, Everybody says, oh, you told them this, you did that. The fact was that our case was so clear that I actually, I actually believe at the end of Aburi that the problem was not the one, but probably some ambassadors in Lagos who were uh, pressing for something else. Because we understood each other. We agreed on every single point. The drafting was, in fact, my chief secretary with two other chief secretaries from the other side. They said, no, no, no. And drafted and agreed. We looked at it. We agreed. General Ankara read over the whole uh, report again to us at the end, asked us if we wanted to amend anything, no. At the end of all that, the position was so good 
that actually Ankara drove Jack, the one, and myself to the airport. Jack was sitting on his left, I was sitting on his right. He was in the middle. And in the course of that journey, at, at a point, General Ankara shook his head and said, oh, thank you. Thank you. If only we can go on like this, everything would be all right. I believe I was the one. As I do now from time to time, I go for the dramatic. Suddenly I picked up the one's hand, put it on Ankara's lap, brought my other hand, placed it on it, and I said, General, sir, hold us together. I want to say something. So General Ankara put his hand on top of the two hands, and I said, General, I want to assure you that I am totally satisfied with everything we said. I will even go further and say to you something I did not say at the conference, and that is that once we have implemented everything we have said, I would ask you for one favor and one favor only, and that would be to be the one to propose Jack Gawan as a head of state of Nigeria. It was a two-day conference of peers and old mates, but its aftermath produced even further controversy. When we came, uh, came back and Ojuku did not go to make the statement he made first, virtually giving the impression that we've uh, agreed for a confederation to uh, move apart, etc., uh, which was really not uh, in exactly that. Uh, if I had had the, uh, the, the, the opportunity to make my broadcast in the first, because that was the agreement, not for him to make the, uh, the uh, broadcast first, then if I had committed myself to what he said, then there, there wouldn't have been any problem. But uh, he went and said certain things that certainly looked uh, wrong, and therefore we saw in practically everything he did. I think it was uh, uh, for uh, to uh, play up uh, you know, to uh, the, the, the gallery not being sincere. At Aburi, yes, we agreed on um, area commands for the armed forces. At Aburi, we agreed that the police force would be decentralized. We agreed on those. Yes. We agreed even to show that we didn't separate at Aburi, we also agreed on certain revenue formula. That's what happened at Aburi. Aburi again, because I always end up, this sounds odd today, but I always end up by saying I must have been naive, because I believed actually that that would be the end. I'll confess to you, when I got back to Enugu, oh yes, I had it, I mean, I had a party, believing that probably the danger was over. That's what we thought. Until they then began to deny everything. It was the denial of Nigeria that made me publish the tapes of Aburi because we had insisted that each one should have a set of tapes. Everybody talks about confederation. Go and look at the transcript. There is no time that the word confederation came from my lips. In broad terms, Aburi changed the title of head of state from supreme military commander to commander in chief. It gave the regions control over internal affairs, 
and concurrence of each region was now required for any decision affecting after the summit, Gowon was yet to begin implementation of some of the agreements at Dabore. The Easterners were agi kept agitating for this and they were heard to be saying on Abiri, we stand. Gowon responded by issuing out Decree 8, which, was, which called for the resurrection of the proposals for constitutional reform and pro constitutional reform promulgated during the Abori conference. There were increasing in indications that the Northern leaders had no intention of implementing the settlement negotiated at Aburi. The clamor to get out of the East was so much on the leader of the Easterners, who was Colonel Ojuku. Therefore, on 26th of May, after a 335-member consultative assembly of chiefs and elders gave him the unanimous mandate after the end of a section, at the end of a section, to pull out to pull the East out of the defunct, defunct Federation of Nigeria. And so, on the early hours of 30th of May 1967, Colonel Ojuku declared the independence of Biafra. And, and so, guys, that brings us to the end of our episode today. The pertinent question that we will be answering in this episode will be, do you think that there was any other solution to this? Do you think there was any other thing that Ojuku could have done other than to declare Biafra at that time? Let me know your comments in the comment section. And like I always say, do not bash any tribe. Move on to make your suggestions and your comments known in the comment section without insulting any tribe. But first, let us hear what Ojuku himself has to and say. And children of our kith and kin, were taken out of their beds and slaughtered. They were massacred in places of worship, in the streets, in marketplaces, and in vehicles trying to carry them to safety. Our people were being massacred all over Nigeria. And to be able to give them better protection in the circumstance available, when within the means available to me, what was done was, once you cross this line, you are home and safe. And Biafra, to a large extent, was in fact that line. By tomorrow, guys, we will be talking about how the Biafrans fought the war. If it's something you're interested in watching, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to keep, click on the bell icon beside the subscribe button, so you'll be notified each time I post a new video. It's to your girl, Naza Gala, bringing you vlogs from Umwaya at Bia State. Bye.